The owner was able to salvage it and put tuck the uh, radius back in. This is a fiberglass roof, but it is a sheet fiberglass we call Phylon, F-I-L-O-N. Um, I don't know. Too securely, but that's it. Old roof is off. It's time to build a new one. All right, well, I've never seen solar installation through the vent pipe of a sewer tank. So the wires are actually coming up to the vent pipe. So that means I have a lot more extra work to do here that I didn't plan on doing because I'm not going to leave it like that. How did somebody do that? It means they drilled a hole through the stack somewhere to feed the wires up through. So I'm going to have to fix the stack too. And then uh, one thing I will also point out, it's kind of hard to pick up. You can kind of see the little spider cracks in this fiberglass, this phylon material. We do see it almost throughout the entire coach here. You can see them over there. That's another reason why we're doing a new roof. Yeah, it could be coated, but you wouldn't want to coat a roof that's delaminating anyways because your coating is just going to stick to the delamination and possibly peel up anyways. So... All right, let me finish up getting everything off off of here and then we'll go from there. Well, here's a quick update on this 2003 Sightseer. The old Phylon material fiberglass roof is off. The next step is to uh, rip off the old wood and put new roof decking down. Again, this is just eighth inch paneling. It comes off the foam pretty easily if you just grab it and pull. This is structural paneling, so you can only do one panel at a time. Off to the lumber store. Back here again. We're going to be looking for what I call 8th inch Luon, but I think it's 2.7 millimeter utility sheet. I always like to keep it up high. But I will say, for the past two years or two and a half years, it's been a little bit harder to find this stuff. So you might want to check your local uh, supplier and make sure they have it before you drive there. Sometimes you have to go to two or three of them. There we go. 2.7, 4 by 8. Well, I used to say this was the cheapest part of the repair, but those things are like $22 a piece now. They've doubled in the last two years. Now, I do wish I could say the next step is to put that new paneling on that we just got, but it's not quite the next step. Because with the uh, file on off, and the deck still supporting the roof. It's nice to clean the track right here of the, all the old sealant. So I need, do need to clean that out and then get all the dirt and everything outside the track right there. But more importantly, it's pretty common. This is the sidewall, this is the roof. This is the header of the sidewall and this is the, uh, the roof framing, if you wanna call it framing, where the sidewall connects to the roof. That's that interlocking design that Winnebago is so proud of. There's some screws holding it all together. If we look down, uh, there, a lot of them are starting to back out, and that's true on both sides. You can see it here too, on this side, maybe even more on this side. So, because these are backing out, I assume the holes are a little bit stripped, I need to tighten these up. And because I assume those number 10s are a little bit stripped out now, I'll be moving to a number 12s. But now what I would always recommend is, don't throw these away. These are really good screws and hard to find on the shelf. But that's what we'll be doing. I won't be replacing all of them. I'll just be uh, replacing the ones that are stripped and tightening up all, and tightening up the other ones. But it's generally best to do this when the phylon's off. That way that flange isn't in your way. If you glue the new one on, it's going to be in the way. It starts to hurt your hand. It's hard to see everything that you need to see. Especially trying to get all this sealant out of the uh, gutter there. The whole way down. So that's the next plan. Then we'll start throwing the deck back on. So I'm just kind of finishing up over on the passenger side now. Got all those up over there. The driver's side's done. 
as far as screws go. But you can kind of see how the sidewall will cinch to the roof. And that gap closes up. Right, now I just have to get out all the old sealant. It doesn't have to be something you can eat off of. It just has to be something that's not going to cause the uh, new material to pucker. And that would cause it to pucker. All right, we've been through this a number of times, but of course to glue down the paneling, that eighth inch paneling we just picked up, we'll be using Stabon 183 Red. This is foam safe, so we're gonna glue the foam to the wood paneling. Uh, this is in a five gallon bucket. Often it comes in a one gallon can. They discontinued carrying it in quart jars now, or quart cans, and we'll just use a siphon gun feed like this. This is a fairly inexpensive model. You can see it's central pneumatic. Uh, I wouldn't waste time buying expensive ones or using a pressure pot, because you'll use a lot of uh, glue just filling up everything and waste glue quite a bit. And then if this gun clogs up, just buy a new one. Don't waste time trying to clean it up. It's a big mess. But that's the next plan. This is part of the most satisfying part. You just kind of lift up on the panel. And it separates from the styrofoam very easily. If you do it right, even one-handed it can be done. Of course, that's what the uh, roof looks like right there. Somebody installed a uh, satellite radio antenna right there at some point. Huh, very interesting. It is a gorgeous winter day here, but if you can see that windsock, it's a little too windy up there. For me to safely maneuver 4x8 sheets of paneling up there in the air, so I'm going to have to transfer over to the booth. Alright, well, the booth should be a lot less windy in here. We'll try this again. All right, so we got the 183 in the gun here. We're just gonna spray the wood and then the foam, and it is a contact adhesive, so as soon as they touch, once they tacked up, it's there, it's glued in place. But you do have to do both sides and let it tack up a little bit. Go. Now because Winnebago chose not to put metal underneath the ladder so that the uh, anchors had something to bite into, we did see a leak right there. So I'm putting metal here and put metal right there so the rear cap has more to bite into than just uh, eighth inch paneling right here. I don't know why Winnebago doesn't do this more often, but here we are. It's not a great deal of effort. And Winnebago does do it periodically, I just don't know why they choose when and when not to do it. Okay. Well, we got the whole deck laid down here. I did run a chalk line right there. I'm going to cut off the excess, just adjusting the circular saw right there. I'm going to find a middle line and we'll get the file on on top of here and we'll start rolling that out and gluing it down. But it looks really good. All right, there's a center line down. Now I can get the file on roll and we can start gluing it down. And the key to putting the file on down is I just find the center of the roll, make sure it lines up with the center line I just put down and we're gonna glue it down the exact same way, except instead of using 183, we use Stabon 440. It's, uh, it sprays a lot better than the 183. Well, there it is, a roll of file on. Just have to get out of this expensive shipping crate. They're very proud of their shipping, that's for sure.
By this point, everybody should know I'm just finding the center of the roll, making a line down the middle. That way I can line it up with the middle here. So I get one chance to roll this out and glue it down. And these are now close to $4,000 in materials at the bare minimum. So I only get one chance of this. So I'll just continue that all the way down, make sure I'm centered. Oh, I think I got it laid out where I want it to be. Take a look right here. We're dead on, dead on. Roll back up, clean up the deck and start gluing it down. Here it is right there, oh, 440 red. I think this stuff's a lot more orange personally. All right, there we go, 440. Like I said, a lot more orange in my opinion. All right, this stuff sprays better though. Well, you know they say it's always better to be lucky than good. I ordered an extra foot, just in case. Because you never know with shipping damage what's gonna happen. And uh, here's the cut edge they sent me. Uh, what I have? About an extra quarter inch. <laughs> Which is fine. It's good. Everything's good. It's all great. Oh, that was hard to do by myself. It's definitely not the first time I've done it by myself, but with the uh, roof right here, I'm hunched over a lot more than I want to be. All right, so with the new file on installed, probably the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the deck to match the shape of the rear wall. And the next step is gonna be to cut the length of the file on correctly to fit inside the track right there. This cutting is not gonna be too difficult because I have a line to trace. I'll just use the tool. Okay. Wouldn't that be perfect? Just good enough. Now you know how I do it. Now I feel like I've covered this issue quite a bit. So I'm gonna get it cut and then maybe, because I don't think I showed enough, I'll show it getting tucked into the radius molding right there. Then after that, it's just assembly, cutting holes and sealing everything up. So hardest part's done once this is tucked. This is also the scariest part. Well, I got it all laid out. It's a pretty straight line that I need to cut off the excess for so that it will tuck in. I think it'll work. We're gonna hope for the best. It's always best to have two people, but sometimes you can do it yourself. I'm just gonna tuck in the track there and work your way down. This is pretty much the most dangerous part because if it rips here, then uh, all this work was for nothing.
All right. Well, there it is. All done. Generally, that's the scariest part, so I'm glad it's over. Now it's just assembly of the roof, and we'll just skip ahead to this whole thing being done, and all the accessories being on, because I'm pretty tired. One thing before we skip to the end, I do like to point out to, that I can use the uh, old paneling, and I line it up on the foam right here. I can find those hidden places like sewer vents, radio, antenna mass, and other things. So that's why you save some of these if you can. But other than that, I got all the other holes cut out. I just have to put the front cap on and the rear cap on and then seal it up and it'll be done. Well, let's see if we can't figure out the mystery of that solar installation. We're in the bedroom here and this is going to be the wet wall where the stack should be. Okay, let's see what we got here. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. So, they decided that it was easier to manufacture that whole thing rather than just run these wires and drill a new hole into the roof. That's, that's, this, this is the most, I, I'm, I'm so angry about this. If you're gonna be installing solar wires, do not drill a hole into the vent stack of the sewage just so you can run wires up there as a cable run. That's dumb. Don't do this ever. I don't know why I have to tell anybody that. I, maybe somebody thought they were being clever. I don't know. Are you going to lose it? Well, I have to because I. they fed it through the top of the sewer vent. Oh. <laughs> so I have to remove this. Or a satellite. Or a solar plate. Right. Two dollars. All right, so we'll cut out that section. That Probably section cut out that too. hole right there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess the good news is it's just a vent stack, so I don't have to worry about anything actually leaking. Well, I guess this could be the black tank. Who's to know? Okay, get that on there. good and we're back in business now when I'm all done putting the roof back together I can feed these lines up and wire it correctly <sighs> we're using clear silicone as the actual uh, flange seal I just mapped out where the flange is gonna be that goes right there just gonna put that on and I'm using these washer headed screws, they're calling all them last screws, just one end. And most of these are going to be used as a clamp, as the uh, sealant dries and cures, and that's what's going to hold it down. Because again, there's not really a lot of uh, wood there to grab onto. Now, if you remember, I put metal in underneath uh, the roof there, so those screws had something to bite into more than paneling. And we did the same thing right here for the ladder. Ooh. We got some metal there. All right. All right, so now the ladder's nice and tight. Hopefully we shouldn't have water leaking over here, damaging the uh, blue one underneath. Got the rear cap on. Almost everything else is on. I just kept the solar panels on, but I need new combiners because one of these broke right there. So I don't want to put those on until I know where they go, but I did go ahead and feed the wires up in a little bit more thoughtful way right here. And get the AC on. The last thing to do is gonna be the front cap, which is gonna be the biggest part to do. And that one I'm not gonna to attempt to do by myself. So hopefully, we're almost done. Oh yes, I forgot one more thing. I'm gonna uh, replace the coax on the TV antenna and get a replacement boot so it doesn't damage our new roof either. But he brought me that vent to put on, and he was just happy with a standard powered vent for the bathroom right there. As, of course, as we use silicone as a flange seal, we got to use self-leveling silicone as a lap seal. Remember, this is just redirecting water. It's a liquid flashing. This is not the primary seal. You should not use a lap seal to depend on weatherproofing any vent or opening. 
Winnebago uses self-leavened silicone, so I try to keep it as factory as possible. And of course, I'm using that hardware there that had silicone on it, and we saw the die core didn't stick to it anyways, and I don't want to use die core, die core, silicone, some other brand up there. We'll make it easy for the next installer. Start sealing it. All right, so I got the panels up here, and if you remember correctly, I had to cut the MC4 connectors off of uh, the wires here. So I have my MC4 connector repair kit to add these on. And of course, we had our broken combiners right there, so I'm gonna have to change those out. They have these ends marked as positive. That'll go to there and change it back to that end, so that means I do need to make this end, the flatter end, the positive one. Now, I would call this a female end to be positive, but it's all very complicated because when it comes to the connector inside, strangely enough, you have a male pin and a female pin, but the female pin goes in the male end and the male pin goes in the female end so it gets very complicated with the mc4 connectors but these kits are pretty inexpensive i don't remember where i think i got this off of amazon so let me this is the end i need take it all apart i got the gland right there and don't tell anybody what i'm doing but i'm using my battery cutters as strippers I promise not to mar up the cables underneath. Of course, before we make the mistake of crimping this end on, gland and put that on there. And the weatherproof connector needs to go on. All right. The tool does come with instructions. It tells you what to do. Don't, don't follow my instructions. Kind of hopefully see we're butted up against insulation. Grab our ratcheting tool right there, release it. Start crimping it. Then hopefully it should just start to feed over. All right, we're all crimped up there. You see that? Looks pretty good to me. Now I can just put this end on. There's little tabbies right there. On the you can see little tabs right there. They'll grab on to this housing and snap into place. All right, now I can't pull it out. I just tighten this thing up. All right, now I gotta do the negative side. Same thing, just different ends. All right, so Chad's busy on the phone, but I got it laid out here. They're gonna right there, and then I have my through plate here that'll direct the wiring right where I need it to be, right about there. I laid it out perfectly, like a dream. All right, luckily I got Scott here to help me with the AC. Thank you, Scott. Hey, you're welcome, mister, mister, mister. All right, I got this lined up in here. I did go ahead and seal those holes a little bit better. Put a new... Gasket on the AC. I'm just gonna compress it until I think we look good. So obviously the last step here is gonna be to put the front cap back on again. We do have it all cleaned up, ready to go. We'll do a test fit, I'll put a mark where everything goes and I'll take it back off again. Put the sealant down. I've done this a thousand times with you guys. And then hopefully we'll have it cut to what being put on. <sighs> I planned on that battery going dead. Only the cool kids have orange screw guns. It's a safety orange. So you can see it at night. That's a new rigid screw gun? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 
I went ahead before I put the cap on, I found the steel framing back there and I'm add two more screws because these uh, front caps like to flare out. Winnebago has since added these to most of their front caps now, almost like they agreed it was a problem. I don't want these screws to grab anything other than the metal behind there, so I wanted to grab the front cap. And then there's two. Do it the other side. And I think I'm about ready to wrap this thing up. All right, guys, we're nearly done with this 2003 Winnebago Sightseer roof replacement. The only thing left to do now is to uh, seal the roof radius to the roof gutter. This is, of course, the most important part on a Winnebago roof. Uh, even if you aren't replacing the roof, if you do have a Winnebago, it's absolutely vital. This is what you're checking at least every year. Twice a year is best because this is what's preventing the, uh, the roof radius from getting ripped off. So now I have found that ProFlex from GeoSil, this is a clear stuff to be the best sealant for this application. Winnebago used a white Manus Bond uh, on their non-painted roofs. And I have found that uh, that stuff falls apart after a few years in the sun. On their painted roofs, they use a very similar product. So what we're gonna do is just push our tip down into there. Cause what we wanna do is actually get down into the channel there. Cause we wanna actually glue the phylon material to the gutter we don't want to put a cap seal on we want this to be a nice bonding sealant so what should happen is as uh, the phylon gets pushed back in it causes the sealant to ooze both up and down and engage pretty substantially with at least a half inch bead on the back side of this uh, gutter the last thing I like to do I just use a foaming cleaner. This is a glass cleaner. You can use a bathroom cleaner. And then I'll just spray this right here. This does not have any application as far as making the sealant work. It just keeps the stuff from sticking to my finger and to the roof quite so easily. And I can wipe off the excess. That's the whole reason why I'm using the cleaner. It has nothing to do with activating the sealant or anything. See how it didn't stick to anything quite so easily. Now I will say this stuff, this ProFlex will stick to uh, wet surfaces if you actually were to put it, push it down. If you can see it sticking to uh, the paper towel just fine. But with just a little bit of uh, care, you should be able to get this up okay. And then don't waste too much time trying to make this the prettiest bead you'll ever see in your life because for the next few hours as this uh, sealant's still pretty uh, soft, it'll keep oozing up as the tension on the uh, phylon keeps pushing it up. So it will actually come up some, and then honestly from the ground level, it's nearly impossible to see whether it looks perfect or 95% good. So let me just go ahead and finish up doing uh, this side, then of course the driver's side, and then we'll get on the roof, and this job's done. All right, well, this thing's been finished up for a few days now. I've just had the time to bake in the sun. So let's take a look at this 2003 Winnebago Sightseer roof that we just replaced and see what it looks like when it's all done. If you remember correctly, it was delaminating pretty bad up on the roof there. But from the ground, I think we look nearly factory. Good news is it made the trip back to the shop without having any problems. Of Let's get on the roof there. We did replace the uh, red light on the rear cap there. Wow, look at that. That is a very good looking, if not handsome, brand new roof on this 2003 Winnebago Sightseer. Starting back here, I did incorporate a lot of metal underneath uh, the decking itself. So the screws, uh, so that the ladder would actually have something to mount into. It's been very secure. Did the same thing on the rear cap here. We did use self-leveling silicone. That is what Winnebago uses. And then on this side, we use that ProFlex from GeoCell to glue the radius to the gutter. And I go ahead and add it right there at the radius too. It's very important that the roof gets mounted underneath the cap at front and back. That gives it a lot of strength to the roof too. I did modify the solar panel installation just a little bit. I took off the 
uh, feed extension that they had as far as that angle aluminum to bring the uh, panels up a little bit higher. I'm not sure why. I did have to rewire the wiring because if they ratted it through the sewer vent originally and then the combiners were broken too. So there's a little bit more work than I was planning on doing. And then of course I didn't go through the sewer vent this time. I came up right next to it where it should have been originally. The skylight I think is only about a year old. So that got remounted the way the factory would have had it. And peering over this side, that edge looks really good. He does need a new slide out topper. We put a new seal on the roof AC. Now this uh, pizza pen 10 was there for I think an XM satellite antenna. That was just a magnetic mount for it. The owner was fine with the condition of this shroud, didn't want me to change it. The TV antenna, he couldn't decide if he wanted to keep it or not. I told him to keep it. We just went ahead and changed out the coax cable on it. I did get a replacement boot and we got that sealed down. This is a digital compatible antenna. I would just leave it in the down position from now on. You don't need to crank these things up anymore to get better signal like you would in the old days with, with analog reception. And this is the new Max Fan 400K. And these clips right there is just for a cover built specifically for this vent. It just fits on there. Put counter pins right there to hold the vent cover down. And we'll look over here. The last real features that I'm going to show you, again, if you remember when we tore it apart, Winnebago doesn't traditionally put a lap seal on the front cap. I think it's a horrible idea because this is going to be a liquid flashing. This will help redirect water away from that seam right there too. If we peer over the front, not too much to see. We did get that windshield gasket reveal put back on. And this was a struggle of a front cap to take on and off. Peering over the side here, uh, you can kind of see how the ProFlex oozes out a little bit more after I tool it. That's very normal because uh, there is a, a spring tension kind of always pushing the phylon material against the scudder and that's really good because that means it's adhering and smearing that adhesive all the way down. Really an important check on every Winnebago to make sure that the sealant hasn't gapped. I do like to use ProFlex more than any other sealant out there because even though it will yellow and it will crack, uh, it's almost self-healing. So uh, if it does crack in the heat, it will almost seal itself back together again, so it's at least a good uh, repair system on it. If you just use a normal silicone sealant, uh, once it cracks, it's cracked. It has no strength to it whatsoever anymore. And yes, I know the radio antenna mast is broken. Uh, the owner was not concerned about replacing it, but I did want to get that. Back, but but I do want to put that back on there. Otherwise, there's a hole, and this mast is very easily replaceable with some generic parts down the road. Of course, I do like to add the extra screws on the side of that front cap to keep this part from spreading out. From spreading out. I've seen a lot of Winnebago's where the uh, front cap start to spread out over time. But we'll give you one last look right there. We had a winter storm the other day. My mountains got covered in snow again. It's a good view of the four peaks there. It's an even better view of this 2003 Winnebago Sightseer roof replacement. The owner should be here in the next few days to pick it up. And the good thing about it is the longer it sits in the sun, the stronger it'll get as the uh, sealant starts to set up and cure. It will take a few weeks for this self-leveling silicone to cure completely. But I'm really pleased with it. Let me get you guys on the ground. We'll take a look on the inside because we might as well. And of course I know... We just did the roof on the outside, but we might as well take a look at the ceiling on the inside to make sure that we're happy with everything we see. If you remember correctly, we did have to redo the wiring. Uh, all the old parts we're not using, I'm giving back to the customer for their use. Uh, the skylight's put back together. We went with a uh, standard 14 by 14 powered vent as requested by the owner. AC's installed, the owner decided on the uh, Max Fan Model 400K. Uh, this does not have the integrated vent lid on it, but it does take a vent lid or a proprietary vent lid that will snap into place really easily. Uh, the front area, again, I was really impressed with uh, the insert that they put for that TV. And, oh, I forgot. We didn't put the satellite dish back in. We did fix the TV antenna, 
but the satellite dish we didn't bother putting back in it was broken and i always think a good looking patch is better than trying to do anything else so we put a brand new smoke alarm right up there that's a 10 year smoke alarm to replace the uh it's the 20 year old battery power smoke alarm that would have been right about there just fluffed up the fabric right there so unless somebody kind of showed it to you you probably wouldn't know that the smoke detector used to be right there and i think that's very passable as far as where the hardware and the handles and crank handles would have been for the satellite dish but overall i'm really pleased with the way this roof turned out hopefully you guys enjoyed following me along on this uh adventure there's only one thing you learn from watching my youtube channel do make sure you're inspecting the roof of any rv if you have a winnebago or you're looking to buy a winnebago uh never never take anybody's word on the roof get up on that roof or have that roof inspected if you do own a winnebago or you're interested in buying a winnebago it's absolutely a vital check not just to check the sealant right here but check on top of the roof make sure it's not delaminated falling apart because of its very unique laminated construction uh, a little bit of a failure will uh, be quite a costly failure very very easily and very quickly but thanks a lot for watching guys bye And of course, no sooner do we get this 2003 Winnebago Sightseer roof replaced than, uh, than we have four more roofs to do. More specifically, Winnebago roofs. So there's a 98 Chieftain, a 2006 uh, Sightseer, where, believe it or not, a storm ripped this whole thing apart. I already have a 2014 Winnebago Adventurer back here because it got in a little bit of a fight with a tree and now it's collapsed down there in the middle there too and i think they still have another one coming in here over at casones rv in mesa arizona so lots of work to be done on these winnebago roofs so if you have winnebago do not neglect doing your roof maintenance and your roof inspections because they will fell on you in the most inopportune time it seems like <sighs> I'm just tired looking at this stuff. Bye. <sighs> Should you ever decide to use your screw gun as a wedge to keep a phylon tube from rolling up, just be aware that if your quick connect bit comes off and it gets stuck underneath the uh, file on it's stuck there forever and you have to cut it out but i didn't have to that happen this time now it looks fake like a toy but now it's got a safety grip on it still good might overheat now a little bit right there I don't think that was worth the wait, but thanks for watching it with me. Let's get this cut. All right, so if you're gonna wire up solar, right? Where would you put the wiring? If I was going to wire solar, uh -huh. like on this unit? Uh -huh. You'd run it up the wall here, right? They ran it through the sewer stack. <laughs> well, why? I don't know, it was right there. Right there. It's, it's right, there. right there. It's right there, right. So they, they pulled this panel off to do this? Yes. So they were... They took all this time. Like putting this in right there, drilling all that out, would take more time than to uh, just drill a hole in the roof. Maybe through all of this open space? Maybe. Please, whatever you do in the future, don't try to be clever and use your uh, plumbing vents as conduits for solar wiring or any wiring don't do that <laughs>